It's time for Mac Break Weekly. And yes, the new iPhones are here. Maybe not a lot of surprises, but there are at least two things uh, that we didn't expect that may be very significant for the Apple ecosystem. I'll tell you what, stay tuned and find out. Renee Ritchie, Chris Breen, and Andy Anako join us next on Mac Break Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for MacBreak Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is MacBreak Weekly, episode 367, recorded September 10th, 2013. C is for kids. Mac Break Weekly is brought to you by Shutterstock.com. With over 28 million high-quality stock photos, illustrations, vectors, and video clips, Shutterstock helps you take your creative projects to the next level. For 30% off on your new account, go to Shutterstock.com and use the offer code MacBreak9. And by the new PDF Pen 6, the powerful all-purpose PDF editing tool from Smile. You can add signatures, make changes, correct typos, fill out forms, and more. And now, with version 6, you can export your PDFs to Microsoft Word format. Learn more at smilesoftware.com slash MacBreak. And by Gazelle, the fast and simple way to sell your used gadgets. Find out what your used iPhone, iPad, or other Apple product is worth at gazelle.com. It's time for Mac Break Weekly, the show that covers the Mac news, and there's mm, iOS news today, big iOS news. And so we brought in the big guns. Of course, Renee Ritchie's here from iMore.com. He was covering the iPhone uh, 5 uh, event uh, from his lair in Montreal. Absolutely. I had my face and my hands plastered up against the glass looking in <laughs> as it rained on me. No stream unless you were in Berlin or China. But uh, hey, what can you do, right? Uh, yep. Also, Chris Breen is here. Thank yes. you, the Mac Daddy from MacWorld.com. I guess Jason was there, right? Jason Snell? Jason and Dan Morin and Lex Friedman were there. You had three people in the room? Yeah. Greedy. Well, <laughs> you know, they didn't have four, so they yeah. here. I guess it is Mac World Magazine. Yeah, That's yeah, pretty important. Yeah. But uh, Andy Anako also in the room, and he will be joining us a little later on via phone. He's down there in Cupertino still at the demo room. Uh, so let's recap. There uh, really weren't many surprises. A new iPhone or two is here. Um, Renee Ritchie, you, of course, uh, the keeper of the rumor mill. Uh, anything that was not in the rumors? I mean, it's hard now, Leo. It's, I mean, if you read the book and then go see the movie, did you spoil the movie for yourself? <laughs> you put all this information online. People don't have to read it, but I think it's almost like a compulsion. Mm -hmm. And there were like minor details, especially software things, like exactly what they were going to do with right. the camera app or the pricing for the iPhone 5C, I thought was one of the most interesting things. But all the major stuff leaks out of the supply chain. And also there's, there's references in the beta software that people find. And it's really hard to keep a secret now if you go on the internet. Take some of the fun out of these events. There's six some of the ooh and ah. There's no one more thing, really. Well, and I think with when Tim came on, they kind of abandoned the one more thing. That was really Steve's trademark. And I and I feel like they didn't want to continue with that and say, no, right. you know, that's that's a bygone era. Let's just announce what we have to announce and, and call a special event when there's that one new thing. So you can go to the Apple store now, but you can't order uh, let's, we'll just run down real quickly what the announcements were. Two new iPhones, an iPhone 5C, which is, a, as predicted, a plastic-backed, essentially iPhone 5, unchanged iPhone 5. That you can pre-order September 13th in the U.S., Canada, China, interestingly, mm -hmm. uh, Germany, England, uh, you know, the usual suspects. They'll have it in 100 countries by the end of the year. Um, but as you say, the price, a little bit disappointing if you were looking for a much less expensive iPhone. In fact, I thought, and I think, Renee, you postulated this as well, that the 5C would mean that Apple could eliminate the 4, the 4S from their product line and move everybody to the 5 platform uh, for iOS 7. Not the case. They are still offering an iPhone 4S. That'll be uh, the free right. phone. $99 subsidized for the 5C, $199 subsidized for the 5 S. The unsubsidized price of the 5C, the so-called inexpensive iPhone, is only $100 less than the 5S. Yeah, that's... $549. I, I think that's a surprise because 
you know, I, th I thought this event, the play would be that this is really about Apple expanding their market for a couple of reasons. One, the less expensive iPhone, the security because they wanted to get into the military and, and other markets like that. If the unsubsidized phone is really up to 550 it's. I think it makes it still a tough sell in China, in Europe, where people are not accustomed to having uh, contract phones, but instead they do buy their phones yeah. unsubsidized. And, and there are clearly other manufacturers that are coming way under that price. A Nokia, for one. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is, this is, well, nobody thought that Apple would make a really cheap phone. In fact, there was a pretty good argument that they shouldn't, that that's not how, how Apple does things. But it did, you know, a number of analysts said if you can get it down to 350 bucks as an unsubsidized or prepaid phone, mm -hmm. that you will have a huge market for it. They didn't. Is that a I mean, surprise, they, Renee? It's it's not a surprise. I mean, if you followed Apple for any length of time, you know that they really don't care to have every customer. They know exactly which customers they want, and they're customers that are willing to spend a certain amount of money on a product. If you looked at the iPod mini, the Mac mini, the iPad mini most recently, their pattern is to take a little bit of money off the price. You know, they have a certain share of the market, and they know that by reducing it $100 or $200, they can increase that addressable market a little bit. There was one spec bump that surprised me. The FaceTime camera now gets a backlit illuminated sensor, and I think it's a little bit better on the micron scale, but it's essentially an iPhone 5 that does that has a plastic back, which means it's easier to manufacture because they had a lot of problems with the anodization on the 5. So it depends what problem you think Apple was trying to solve, and that problem was never going to be offer a $200 or a $300 iPhone. Five colors, white, red, yellow, blue, and green. And then Apple, uh, seeing, I think, a lot of money uh, slip by them in the brisk accessory market has decided to offer complementary colorful cases with holes in them so <laughs> that uh, you can mix and match the colors and have the holes shine through with another color. Um, it is an A6 chip, 8 megapixel eyesight camera. That's the new camera in the front. 4-inch uh, retina display, LTE. You know, t it's basically an iPhone 5 with the exception of that eyesight uh, camera. The old chip uh, no fingerprint reader. Um, the price is the thing that I, does a little bit surprise me. Un, unsubsidized, yeah. SIM-free, 16 gigabytes, $549, 32 gigabytes, 600 I don't think we know what it's going to be in China yet. I mean, that's a big question because if China Mobile goes through, we don't know what the subsidy deal or the contract between them would be. And, you know, it's hard to imagine this will be a $550 phone on China Mobile. That was a little bit of a surprise. We, we thought maybe they would mention China Mobile. This has been the, you know, the, the other shoe to drop in China. That's the biggest carrier in China. And they have not been on China Mobile because of their restrictive, you know, demands of Apple. Mm -hmm. Apple wasn't willing to see them. And I don't know if they've made that deal or not. Well, I was wondering if in the stream to China, there was just a little footnote there saying, by the way, don't tell other people, but this is what they're <laughs> going to charge you for it. Because obviously they want that market. And right. I, at this price point, I, I don't know. Right. They did make a big deal about it being the most widespread LTE, like the most compatible LTE device, uh, sorry, phone ever. And they did announce NTT.como in Japan, right. which had mm -hmm. previously not carried the iPhone. So they are at least pushing those international boundaries still. Some of that's because of the technology catching up. All the phones now are having, are able to. And I know you talked to Sasha Segan of this uh, about this on PC of PC Magazine on your uh, iMore podcast. Uh, all of the phones now, thanks to Qualcomm and other chip manufacturers, are able to support far more LTE bands, uh, and that's very important. You don't want to make multiple phone models. Currently, Samsung does. They have a Qualcomm chip in the U.S. models and an Exynos Samsung chip in the uh, international models, and that's because of the different radio bands. And the certification processes are really onerous uh, in some jurisdictions right. as well. But there's 40 discrete segments to be supported in LTE, and Jeez. that's hard to get on one chip. <laughs> because everyone uses a, like there's not that many bands, but everyone uses a slightly different part of that band because there's a range there. And then some people have wide support, some people have narrow support. It, it's much trickier. It's like, it's, it really is a black science to get it done. Uh, so it says pre-order September 13th on the 5C. Chad? We have Mr. Anako on the line. Hey, good news. Andy Anako, hey, who's yo. at One Infinite Loop? He's at the uh, town hall where he's... Uh, have you been up to the demo room, Andy? I'm in the demo room right now, as a matter of fact. Tell us what you see. Uh, <laughs> big crowd. 
the people. I think that uh, this is going to be like site zero for whatever next pandemic disease comes in because everybody's putting their fingers on this exact same like one square centimeter area of five different uh, sample iPhone 5Ss. Uh, to try out the fingerprint authentic- authentication. It's working well enough that they're just letting everybody, but through a, gu- a guy's there to guide you, but everybody can basically train their own fingerprints and see how well it works. That's pretty impressive that you could train it so quickly that you can tr- test it and train it, uh, you know, while having a few minutes with the phone. Yeah, and it, and, and it does work just fine. I mean, it's uh, the really cool Apple interface, too. When you set up, a, when, you, when you train it for your fingerprint, there is like a grayed out like fingerprint on the screen. And what, you're, what it asks you to do is keep tapping and holding, tapping and holding, tapping and holding that button with the same finger. And the more it learns, the more of those gray like loops and whirls and that fake fingerprint gets filled in with red. So you know that, okay, I don't have to do this for 10 hours. It's getting more and more red. I'm, I'm closer and closer to success. Uh, and once, you, once you're done, then it asks you to now please try holding this with like other edges of that same finger so I know what the side of your thumb looks like, what the tip of your thumb uh, feels like. Uh, there is once you've got it registered in you there is a brand new sort of semi gesture to learn that I screwed up when I first tried it uh, you you click the home button as usual to wake it up but then you lightly rest your finger on the home button without depressing it uh, in order to get the authentication uh, so if you what I was doing is I was pressing and holding and activating uh, voice command uh, time and time again uh, but once you got it cut into your head that Click one, wakes up the phone, resting it, authenticates you. Now you're in. Uh, and it only takes like a half a second for you to go in. You don't decide like you have to tap and wait. So it, it works really good. You can authenticate as many as five fingers. Uh, if you, and I tried doing it with like not the, not the hand that I'd authenticated with. It wouldn't let me in. So it seems to work really, really sweet. Apple says they're going to use this. We'll talk more about the 5S uh, uh, in a little bit. This is a 5S only feature. But Apple says they're going to use this not only for unlocking the phone, but also for authentication on the Apple Store, the App Store, the I- iTunes uh, Store. That means they trust it enough to say, yeah, this is as good as a password. Yeah, that, that really surprised me. I, I was pretty sure it was, it was going to be using for unlocking. I kind of thought that, not that they wouldn't trust it for e-commerce, but I thought that at least want to see, well, let's get 5 million people using this first just to satisfy ourselves that this is it's okay to unleash the hounds. But, yeah, they're confident enough about it to make this a, a day one feature. That's really impressive about how much they, they feel about it. And also, I think it really does speak to how much CPU power is in the new A7 processor. I mean, every single thing they put into that uh, that uh, that presentation today was fueled by the fact that they've got um, like an amazing horsepower CPU inside that phone. Yeah, they uh, will, t- and we'll talk more about that in, in a little bit. Let, let me get just while you're there in the demo room. Any other impressions? Did you get to play with the camera? Uh, not yet, because there's still a big crowd, and uh, it's hard to see uh, how the how well the camera works. I did check out the flash. The flash certainly looked like an immediate improvement over what, I'm ex- what I usually expect from an iPhone. Uh, instead of that weird greenish, bluish color, it seems nicely balanced. It's still not, it still has the same problem where it's an LED, so it's not quite so powerful, but you're already immediately getting really nice natural color. As far as the other things that the camera promises to do, I'm just not in a position to really right. check that out yet, so I don't want to say. The, yeah, the, demo, the demo photos they put look very good. Apple's saying they have dual LEDs, one uh, on the blue end of the spectrum of the color uh, spectrum and one in the warmer yellow end of the spectrum, and that they can mix the two to give you a flash that matches the ambient light of right. the room up to a thousand different settings. That's what they said. So yeah. very variable power for each one, so variable color. Really cool stuff. That's a great idea, and I don't think anybody's doing uh, anything anywhere near like that. What were your impressions yeah. of the uh, presentation itself? The, uh, again, typical Apple presentation, really tight, really focused. They know they have our attention for the first 15 minutes, no matter what they said. So that's a good opportunity to talk about how how happy they are to be in so many international markets. They showed off the new the revamped Stanford store. Uh, I think that we're going to be not too long before we see them be proud about the revamped San Francisco store. Uh, but really, it was two or three very, very concise messages that were repeated over and over again through implementation in different ways. 
meaning that we have this hot, hot, hot new processor that lets us do a million things better. Like, again, you, you, could, you could spend so much time just talking about the camera where it's doing things like, well, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna sort of pre-take every version of this photo when you click the shutter, and then we're going to combine the best parts of every single it, it, iteration of that photo to give you the best possible picture. So although they're not doing something as cool as Nokia is doing with that immense like 1020 Lumia sensor, they're saying, well, we, we're going to make a marginal improvement to the hardware, but we're going to open up the potential of this really cool CPU to build a synthetic image that's better than anything we could do for real. Uh, and re- and, the, and the other and the other secret message was you know international, international, international. Uh, one thing was we all know that they were talking about uh, the, the five C being here's our inexpensive phone for international markets. But the other thing is that. They also made sure that they that everybody knew that this has more radios in it than any other iPhone we've made, and that's the, uh, the, five, the 5C. And that's their way of saying that this is a truly international phone. And just to, and just to make sure that I, that I get this in, too, I did spend some time with the 5C. Uh, it definitely underscores the point that plastic cases are not the problem. Badly designed plastic phones are the problem. It, it feels It doesn't feel like a plastic case. Because of that steel frame, my, my, my fingertips are sort of telling me that, no, this isn't plastic. This is enameled metal uh, that, uh, instead of plastic. It really feels like a solid, well-made item. Does it feel like the plastic on the Nokia phones, uh, you know, that kind of soft-touch uh, polycarbonate or something else? No, again, it feels, it, to me it felt more like enamel. Uh, I wouldn't call it slippery, but it has that sort of, uh, it's hard to articulate, but like, that sort of like dense feel to it. It doesn't have like a, a pebbly surface to it. Right. It doesn't have a, a rubbery texture to it. Uh, like I said, enamel is as, as close as I can get to explaining the feel of it. In it, effect, it really that's, doesn't feel like a $99 phone either. It is kind of, in effect, a coating around an alum, uh, metal frame. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anything else, Andy, before we let you go? Because I'm sure you want to get back over there and play with those phones some more. <laughs> Uh, not much. I, again, I, I got to shake Elvis Costello's hand. That was pretty cool. Got to shake <laughs> Tim Cook's hand, which I've never, never actually met him before. So now I've met Tim Cook, met the met the vice president. So this has been a very good day for me. Somehow coming up with the right thing to say that didn't make me sound like an ass to somebody that I really, really respect. You, 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 you shook Al Gore's <laughs> hand, Tim <laughs> Cook's hand, and Elvis Costello's hand in one half and hour Elvis period. Costello. That's pretty darn impressive. That was uh, well. Again, I was about to say and not embarrass myself, but you know what? Leo, the day's still young. I'm sure that I still <laughs> look like a total jerk to most of the, uh, most of the known world. <laughs> All right. Hey, thank you so much. Andy Yanako, he's there at the town hall in uh, Cupertino, California, where Apple has just announced two new phones. We'll let you go, Andy. Go play with uh, – you get your choice. Go play with Elvis, Al, Tim, or the phone. Your choice. M- my new close personal friend. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Andy Yanako. Great to have you here in the, on the West Coast. Uh, we'll have more in just a little bit. We'll talk more about the two new phones. Our uh, hosts, our panelists, Renee Ritchie from iMore.com, who's, of course, watching this with a great interest as well. As, well, we all are. Chris Breen from uh, MacWorld.com. Our show today brought to you by our friends at Shutterstock.com. Now, 28 million. I love One of the things I love to do is go to the Shutterstock site and look at the count now they say at the top over 28 million stock photos illustrations vectors and videos but if you scroll down a little bit you can see the actual number as it increases currently 29 million 141 thousand 181 royalty free images 159 thousand images added this week that's one of the things that's great about shutterstock.com that and the amazing search tool please create a free account you don't need to give them a credit card number just create an account so you can start playing with the search engine so you can search for iPhones of course but then you can narrow it down if you like using the spectrum tool which lets you select different colors from a color wheel you can save images that you like uh, to your light box a great way to uh, save images you might use later to save them for uh, inspiration but also to share them with colleagues uh, and you can do all that for free without even uh, without even paying a dime now if you'd like to download images they have individual image packs or a monthly subscription that's what we use if you're a, a, a publication or you use a lot of stock photos that's a great deal 25 images a day with a standard subscription and i'm gonna tell you how you can save quite a bit in just a moment try their uh, beautiful ipad app it's a, or iphone it's just gorgeous it really looks more like a, just a gallery of wonderful images and don't forget it's not just photos if you 
click the tab at the top of the Shutterstock page. You can look at f uh, video footage as well. Very high quality. 1.2 million high quality royalty free stock videos. What does royalty free mean? It means you pay for it once and you can use it in your PowerPoint presentations, on your blog, whatever your creations are. These are great. Look at that. That makes me want a mojito or a barbecue. Mmm. Shutterstock.com. Now, if you decide, you don't need to have a credit card to get up an account, so do that. But if you decide to buy, please, I invite you to use MacBreak and the number 9 as the offer code. MacBreak9, one, one word, 9 for the month of uh, September. And we will take 30% off that first purchase. So that makes a subscription really good. Shutterstock is truly international. They're in more than a dozen countries. Full-time, multilingual customer support throughout the week. You're never going to need it, though. You're just going to start browsing and having fun and get those images. Shutterstock.com. Please use our offer code MacBreak9. Leo Laporte, Renee Ritchie, Chris Breen, talking about the new iPhones. So the 5C is, you know, I mean, there you go. It's uh, it's not exactly cheap, but a, a lower cost, more affordable phone. You said it would be good for the kids, Chris. Yeah, I think the the colorful casing is going to be attractive to parents. One, if they can get the uh, lowest model, which is ninety nine bucks, they're not. That's the subsidized price. Yeah, subsidized. Yeah. But if they're already with AT and T or right. Verizon on a right. family plan, right. sure, throw ninety nine bucks at it, pay for that phone. My daughter's going to get one. I hope she's not listening, but she's going to get one. Good. <laughs> and uh, I'm not sure what color yet. I guess I'll have to consult with her about this. Oh. But, you know, for I think for a lot of parents, and well, I recall not, it was many years ago that I walked into Tech TV, called for help, and it was just after the iPod mini announcement. And you said, what happened? And I said, uh, new iPod mini, talked about the price, I think it was 249 and we both said, too expensive. Not going to buy that for the kids. Not going to buy that for the kids. Not going to do well. And it turned out to be the best-selling <laughs> iPod they ever made. So that shows you what we know. And in fact, I did buy one for Abby. Yeah, right. <laughs> so um, a kind of a pushover when it comes to that. The kids really do want the iPhones. and the uh, and I mean, I, I offer my kids Android devices all the time. Windows phone devices, Blackberries even. No, they, they want the iPhones. <laughs> yeah, and I think particularly with the color, colorful cases, that's the one they're going to want. Yeah. They don't care about a gold iPhone. Well, that's now, the next thing. I mean, the, 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 everyone talks now about the next million users. All us geeks, all us early adopters, we've gotten our smartphones. We've upgraded many times. We're maxing out the market. And the next billion customers are going to be people upgrading from feature phones or getting their first smartphone. And what's important to them is usually very different than what's important to us. And they're more, they're more price sensitive than we are, but they also want fun features and they want more durable devices. And this looks exactly where Apple's aiming the iPhone 5C. Now, for mom and dad, let's take a look at the 5S. Mm. No surprises here. They're not calling it black anymore, though. There's there's gold. They didn't call it champagne. There's white, I guess. It's not white. It's kind Silver. of silvery. Yeah. yeah. And there's space gray. Yes. What a name. <laughs> <laughs> this will be available September 20th. What, you know, what I'm not clear about, does that mean... You could pre-order a week earlier, pre-order a 5C and get it September 20th? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> and you'll be able to get the 5S day of. Why no yeah. pre-orders for the 5S? Uh, you know, those lines around the Apple Store look really good in the paper. And on oh, the there, I mean, there might be. We'll have to wait till all the information is up. But it, it, it's, it's right after the event and maybe not all the I's and T's have been dotted and crossed it yet. It seems odd that they would not give you a chance to pre-order it as a week ahead easier for everybody. I mean, we heard about the Slate one a couple of weeks ago and I had one of my writers, Ali Kazmuha, uh, she works in the anodization business and she kept saying black is so hard to anodize. Gold is the easiest color. You just put right. some iron oxide in and it goes gold. But black is really hard and Apple had a lot of chipping and scratching problems. And if you're going to change a color, especially a really popular color like black, this is probably the best um, color plus resiliency combination they could come up with. Unlocked price on 16 gigabytes, 650, 750 for 32 gigabytes, 850 for 64 gigabytes. There is no 128 gigabyte phone. A little disappointing, I think, to oh. some. But frankly, the trend is that way. I mean, I, it, people are streaming stuff. You got match. You, there's no yeah, reason yeah. to to load everything up on the phone. Um, it of course is the same frame. Although I have to say, in the gold, that's it. It looks different. It looks like a new phone, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. I'm I'm still curious about the earbuds. Whether they're, are they gold? <laughs> are they gold? I mean, you know, no. Apple's never made anything no. but white. True. Only the Johnny Ive auction versions are gold. A uh. Apple invented white uh, earbuds, and really, that was a trademark. Yeah. 
for a long time. I'm getting gold, Leo. Oh, can I get the gold? Look at that. It just looks like the, the phone of the rich and famous. <laughs> it looks gorgeous. Um, our price is the same as always, subsidized at $200, $300, and $400. I have to say, though, in this day and age, uh, charging 100 bucks to double the flash RAM seems a little bit pricey. They could have done that for less, but mm -hmm. they're Apple. They can get away with it. Um, the big the big differences on this phone, of course, and I do love that that metal around the uh, home button or the fingerprint uh, reader in the home button, just as predicted, and a, a much improved camera. And of course, we're going to get to iOS seven in a bit because that's going to be a new feature, not only for the new iPhones, but also for anybody with an iPhone four or up, an iPad two or up, and an iPad mini. Uh, so iOS seven, we'll talk about in just a little bit. But let's let's talk a little bit about the. Uh, the 5S. Internals, maybe there was a revelation there. It's a system on a chip. It will be the A7. Apple saying the first smartphone with 64 gigabit, I'm sorry, not gigabit, regular bit, mon mono bit, 64 bit uh, uh, architecture. What is, is that important? What does that mean? On mobile? I mean, I, I, well, the interesting thing is... <laughs> they say 64-bit desktop class architecture. I mean, Apple managed the 32-bit to 64-bit transition on the Mac really well. It was almost transparent to users, and it looks like they're doing the same thing with iOS. But on the desktop, it was all about giant, you know, you can address huge amounts of RAM, giant Photoshop files, huge Final Cut Pro videos. Uh, and it's not clear yet, or at least they haven't shown yet, what they're going to be doing on mobile or what they're going to allow developers to do on mobile that will make it take advantage of 64 bits. You know, a kudos to Mark Gurman for nailing that and to Clayton Morris for nailing the, the M7 chip. What Clayton got wrong uh, was the uh, speed bump. They were he, he was saying benchmarks show a mere one third faster. Apple's saying as much as twice as fast. Yeah, and the graphics and CPU speed. I mean, maybe Clayton heard the, the thirty three and thought it was percent and not X, because some of the stats <laughs> they showed are really impressive. I I do have to point out, and this is the problem when you talk bits. Twice the bits doesn't mean twice as fast by any means. In fact, it can mean slower. Yeah, and also you have to look at how they ran their benchmarks. Of course, they're right. going to run them in such a way that their hardware is shown off in, in its best uh, possible light. Right. So we'll see. In re I mean, it's the same thing with, with battery use. When they, they run through the battery statistics and say, yeah, you get X number of hours here, there, and everywhere else. But people who have iPhones understand that sometimes you can drain a battery in a matter of hours, depending on what you're doing. That's a very good point. And, you know, if you talk to someone <clears throat> like Brian Klug from Anantech or Sasha Segan from PC Mag, the tests bear out that Apple gives you real world usage numbers. Most manufacturers will say 24 hours of battery life and include eight hours of you sleeping in right, that test, right. which is not really straightforward for a user. But they the big thing here, which was in a previous iPhone, is the uh, standby time, 250 mm -hmm. hours, which shows probably some of the low power optimization done in the A7 chip. Yeah, let, we're going to talk about the M7, which is a very important part of it. But I, I want to stick with the A7 a little bit here, Six, uh, and particularly with 64 bits. I, I think 64 bits is playing a numbers game. I don't see any benefit on a, on a phone to 64 bits. I truly don't. You have larger registers, but most of the time you don't want to use those large registers. Mm -hmm. um, you don't, you know, the biggest difference is more addressable RAM they don't say how much RAM's in here, but there's no way that it's as much as four gigs, which is the limit of the 32-bit uh, processor. So I'm I'm not convinced 64-bit is is significant. It, it, yes, it's using the new ARM V8 apparently. It's uh, bragging rights. It's bragging rights, right? Or am I wrong on that? I mean, it depends if you have a 400 PPI screen. Is that really advantageous to a human being, <laughs> yeah, or is it bragging true. rights that you got that's true. 1080p into a three-inch right. display? That's like, right. Yeah. Um, a billion transistors, which is kind of that's a, a nice number. A sexy it's number, a sexy, yeah. hundred two millimeter uh, square millimeter die size. Um, the I think you know they're they're getting more performance out of this thing. The, the, we have to remember that these are ARM based designs that Apple fabs to make their own.
processor. We don't know. Do we know what the GPU is in here, Renee? Do we? We don't. The suspicion was that it'd be the new Power VR Rogue chip, which is a really impressive chip. And the one thing to keep in mind is Apple used to introduce the A series and the new iPads when they were in the spring, but now they introduce them in the iPhones. But this means that the iPhone 5, the iPad 5, and the iPad Mini 2 will probably be getting this chip. And when you start to look at Apple's gaming ambitions, when you start putting this chip throughout their iOS device lines, it becomes you know, maybe 64-bit makes no sense on a phone, but maybe in an iPad, the kind of software ah. they want to make will make a lot more sense. So maybe we're going to see a 4 gigabyte or higher iPad. If not now, maybe when their set-top box plans become right. clear. But yeah. it looks like they're future-proofing quite a bit here. Right. Because one thing people hate is they get, like, the iPhone 4 gets iOS 7, but not the 3GS. And people complain that Apple doesn't future-proof their devices enough. When they start to put 64-bit in, maybe that's a sign of where they're going in a couple of years. The other, so, and they're Apple's, by the way, claiming 2X GPU, up to 2X GPU as well as up to 2X CPU. Yeah. Infinity um, Blade. They dragged out Infinity Blade, which just cracked me up because, of course, uh, they announced Infinity Blade Dungeons at a iPad event more than a year mm -hmm. ago, a game which never was released. Um, this time they're saying it's going to come out on the 20th, the same day that the phone comes yeah, out. Yeah, I think that was the silent apology. Like, <laughs> no, really, this time we're going to do it. And uh, no, a day and date, it's going to be there for you. Yeah. Um. <laughs> and like Peter Cohen says, it's a, it's a tech demo. I mean, Infinity Blade's never been the best playing game, but mm. boy, is it the game you want to show pretty. everybody yeah, yeah. to justify the money you spent on that hardware. It's pretty. Yeah. Um, the big thing, and I don't, I don't, did, so you said Clayton got this, this is the M7, this secondary chip. Yeah. Um, this is, for, reminds me a lot of what uh, Motorola's done with uh, the X, uh, their X processor, their, what are the X8, or could they call it? Or X seven, I can't even remember. But um, the idea is this is this this was a D in the Motorola case. It was dual DSPs that were low power, so that the phone could kind of be alert even without uh, powering up. That's kind of how Apple's going to use the M seven. But instead of using it to listen, it's going to use it to watch your movements, to watch the gyroscope and the accelerometer and the other sensors. This is for health purposes. For yes, monitoring. Yep. Movement. I would have kind of liked them to do Siri like Google Now with you know onboard parsing, so you don't have to wait for the network all Wouldn't the that time. That'd have been awesome. Yeah. Hello Siri, so you could wake it up, and I, it's just a little. I mean, this is great. Nike Plus is going to be there. It kind of it's a harbinger of iWatch's future, maybe. Uh, but to me, getting better Siri would have been more important than getting all the the pedometer functionality in this version. Seems that they could use this to do that to listen for. Okay, Siri. Yeah. And, uh, oh, no, I just woke up my phone. I put it over well, here. I think as Renee says, a lot of this is forward-looking, and I think that M7 chip is as well. Yeah. So, that, I mean, as we were talking earlier, uh, some kind of watch strategy. It really that is a harbinger. Sense. Yeah, it really is saying, yeah, we're going to be doing this. Right. right now with Nike, maybe not next time. Yeah. Or maybe next time. As we've pointed out many times, Tim Cook is on the board at Nike. And, Where's a fuel you know, tick tock, next year is a talk. Ah, yeah. Yeah, but that's another thing to point out. This is this is not the big year of big changes to the iPhone. This is the small changes. No, it's to the, the S model. And yeah, so model. Yeah. yeah, faster. Did they say it was thinner? Probably not. It's not no. thinner. It's the same exact same chassis. chassis, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, they, but they have it put in this fingerprint reader, uh, sapphire coating to make it more durable. I love the metal ring. Apparently, that senses your finger moving mm -hmm. into position. And as Andy pointed out, you don't press; you just hold it there mm -hmm. lightly. You press to unlock. You press to open the to activate the home screen like you would normally, and then you hold it there for a second to authenticate. Uh huh. Uh, it looks like it works pretty well. I like the. I mean, it, it's important that they do offer a password backdoor. So if you can't get it to work, or your thumbs are broken or something, uh, you can always enter the password. <laughs> well, also if you're in a really cold climate, you don't want to pull that phone out and right. take your gloves off. That's right. To do this, so you leave that there. So that's your that. winter option. Yeah. Well, it is capacitive. I mean, it, it looks interesting. The sapphire is there to stop it from scratching. You have the metal ring to detect that there's a finger there to power up the authentication chip. And then you you depress it to activate the home screen and then the fingerprint reader. So they've kind of thought out the process really well. And it seems to indicate that you have to be alive at least to do it, which is kind of nice from a security perspective. Right. I wonder how they test that. <laughs> <laughs> they use Play-Doh fingers. Sausages. They use those <laughs> sausages from Korea that they used for capacitive screening. Ah. <gasps> I do think it's significant, I guess I said this to Andy, but I do think it's significant that they are trusting it enough to use it for the Apple Store, the iTunes Store. 
Uh, they're putting their money literally where their thumb is, where your thumb is. Uh, and that's a big deal because that means sure. they want eventually, I think, to make this be uh, a payments authentication system. Oh, yeah. Well, I think we've talked long and hard about this where Apple really wants to be in the business of using these devices as a credit card. Right. And eventually taking a cut of any transaction that you make. And this is one avenue to doing that. I also think this would be great. And I don't know if there probably isn't an API. We'll have to look at the... Uh, the dev center, but uh, it'd be great if you could have this also authenticate for things like PGP encryption and things yeah. like that. Even just to open apps, if you have photographs or you have right. text messages you don't want people to see. Do we know if there's an API? It. Have you looked at that? They didn't announce anything and they did announce other APIs. So right. uh, usually they, you, I mean, Apple's fairly serious about supporting their APIs. So, I mean, I'm pretty sure they want to test it themselves right. on hundreds of millions of people before they give it to developers to that makes play sense. With. That makes sense. Are you disappointed there's no NFC? Does this replace NFC? The, the thing with NFC, Leo, that I never understand is that people talk about NFC, but, you know, Apple doesn't care about chipsets that they can invent features for. They care about feature sets that they have chips to support. And there's so much functionality that, I mean, NFC is just a chip. Depends what you do with it. Depends what features you offer. Apple's going to be doing a lot of really interesting things with Bluetooth Low Energy and Wi-Fi Direct. That pe When people say they want NFC, Apple's doing it, just not with an NFC chip. So does the end user really care what the name of the chip inside the package is? Probably not as much. Yeah, I, I just feel like NFC is gaining momentum now on other platforms. And uh, in fact, it's in everybody else's phone now. Apple's the, la the last holdout. But it's kind of the Apple way to do things their way. Right. I mean, you, you look at something like iCloud, where there were existing structures for doing that kind of cloud sharing. And Apple said, no, 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 we're not going to do any of that. We're going to invent our own. Because they believe firmly in their technology. Right. And I guess they've got the plan ahead on the whiteboard saying, yeah, no, this is what we, we're going to do. And when you look ahead, I mean, they have Passbook, but it doesn't tie into any of this yet. But Passbook Kit is an abstraction that you could put a lot of stuff behind. So maybe with an iPhone 6, it suddenly gets NFC for chip-based transaction. Passbook Kit gets NFC recognition. And the um, the authentication, the Touch ID, gets put all to all of that at once. Apple's usually really slow to roll out new radios. But when they do an implementation, it's usually a very feature-focused implementation. So I can just see this as, you know, sort of getting all their pins on the right getting all their pins in the right place on the board before they move. Um, Apple's iOS Dev Center just tweeted that uh, the Gold Master has been released uh, of uh, iOS 7. If you're a developer, you can download it now along with an updated Xcode, uh, seed 11A465. So um, I think that makes sense because that they're about expected. to release it yeah, you know, on the they, 20th. Yeah, once they <laughs> announce this, the GM would come out. Right. Developers can sign off on their stuff, make sure it works, and when the new device comes out, hopefully it all works fine. Yeah. Um, they said that we will be able to download iOS 7 on all of our devices that are iOS 7 compatible on the 18th, two days before the iPhone comes out. Which so, is normal. Yeah. A typical pattern. Yep. Yep. And does that mean iPad 2? iPad 2 and up, including the mini. I the iPad mixed itself. Mixed results. Yes. I yeah, because there was speculation press. about that, whether they were going to release Well, they the iPad said version. on the slide it said it would work, but uh, what, Renee, you're saying it doesn't work well? No, I saw no, I saw mixed reports. Some people were reporting, some people who were in the room were saying that it was going to be for the iPhone first, and then the iPad version ah, would come out at the oh, iPad event. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. some people said it's all coming out, and I haven't gotten a clear answer. You know what, they weren't that clear, uh, that's right, they weren't clear in the, in the presentation. Right, because... Um, you know, through the grapevine, you hear from people using the developer edition for the iPad, and they say it's way behind in terms of stability. Uh, well, the beta was released weeks later yeah, as well. Yeah. All right. And the same thing with the iWork apps. I mean, they showed off, and that's a whole other conversation, but it, it, Apple probably doesn't have the engineering resources to get all those iWork apps updated with a new look and feel for launch because right. they're so busy working on the iPhone version. Well, uh, let's finish up on hardware, and then we will take a break, and we'll talk about iOS 7. We'll talk about iWork. Uh, new camera in the uh, 5S, uh, f2.2, which is very fast, 1.6 microns. They didn't say how many megapixels. It's the same. It's the same. It's an 8-megapixel yeah. camera. Thank goodness. I mean, the megapixel thing, they increase the size of the microns, which is inverse to the megapixels. If you go up in megapixels, usually you chop the sensor up, make it much smaller. And that's that famous Steve Jobs iPhone 4 event. It's all about the photons. It's the photons, Leo. Right. And By this the, sucks in more photons. Somebody in the chat room, Mime Artist, is saying that the Gold Master does include an iPad iOS 7, by the way. Oh. Um, we'll see nice. if we can confirm that. Uh, 
So, uh, it, uh, so same megapixels, uh, but but it's bigger microns, which is good for low light. The dual color uh, LED flashes, I think that's interesting. I don't think yeah. anybody else is doing that. F two point two. F two point two. It's five elements. Mm -hmm. Apple once again putting a lot of uh, emphasis on the camera and the quality of the camera. Even their ads, doing... right? Say the camera is you know number one uh, camera. Well, and thank goodness they're doing it for the flash too, because that's always been the vulnerability of that camera. Is you you shoot at night right. with the flash, and it's just terrible. Should mention that Apple stock down uh, two percent, almost three percent, uh, down twelve dollars. But that's always what happens. Yeah, yeah. you sell buy the on the news. rumor, you sell on the news, and this right. is the news. Doesn't the other interesting news. thing, you know, Andy, whenever he's here, points out the image signal processor on the iPhone five is amazing. Does fantastic white balancing, fantastic exposure, and they're in, they're making that better with the A seven as well. And it doesn't have optical image stabilization like the HTC One or the Nokia Lumia range, which does really good low light, not so good motion photography, but they're gonna do auto uh, image stabilization. So they're doing a lot of what other people do in the glass, in the software, and we'll have to see how it turns out, but it just shows how important the chipset is and why Apple wanted to control you know, the entire design of that processor. Yeah, and I think they're right not to increase the megapixels, they're right to focus on back-end software. That's where all the action's going to be. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Um, so a 15% larger sensor. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention 10 frames per second burst mode and uh, 120 uh, frame per second slow motion video. That's 4X, I think. Uh, so unless yeah, they're 720p. doing... 720p. But it's at 720p, a little lower resolution. That makes sense. Um, slow mo's fun. I mean, this is a lot of this is catch-up. If you look at the HTC One, it's an F2 camera with even larger micron uh, size, uh, larger pixels. Um, they have slow mo. So do the Galaxy line has slow mo, um, you know, burst mode and so forth. The the ability to look for the best picture in a bunch mm -hmm. of pictures. This is all that's all catch up. Yeah. And I don't mean it depends how well mustard. they implement it because a lot of the I mean the HTC stuff was fantastic, but finding Zoe's was a little counterintuitive in the right. software. Right. So it depends how well they surface all that for the end well, user. And that's absolutely true. And this is where Apple will shine because neither Samsung nor HTC has very easy to use software. Yeah. Um, so that's where Apple can really shine. All right. I think that's all there is to say about the 5S, except the price, which we mentioned is the same as the old iPhone price, six hundred fifty dollars mm -hmm. contract free for sixteen gigs. Um, one ninety nine subsidized for sixteen gigs, and uh, I guess there'll be lines. I bet you there'll be lines this year because there's no way else to get a day of right. Yeah, right. Uh, you have to be at the store. I think yeah, you have to be at the store. Although for that five C, I think they're going to chip a lot of those. Do you things. think that's going to be the big seller? I think it is of the two. Yeah, I, I, I honestly do. Except for those people who really want the gold. Um, <laughs> you know, if you're only one year into a contract on an iPhone five. Maybe this isn't going to be enough that you're going to want to pay that extra hunk of cash in order to get the Interesting. Finest. Yeah. Did we see if it was 802.11 AC? I didn't look on it any is of not. the It's just It N. is not. That's disappointing. AC is available in the uh, Galaxy S4 and the HTC One. Uh, newer phones have AC. And Apple's new routers. And Apple's router. That's right. Yeah, Apple's right. one of the one of the companies that's shipping an AC router. I forgot about that. In fact, that's what I have at home. Yeah. That's what I've been testing the HTC One and S4 with. <laughs> Uh, I don't think that makes much, to be honest, I don't think that makes much difference. Most internet access isn't as fast as that. AC is mostly of value uh, intra-network transfers. Right, which uh, is important for the iPhone just because, I mean, the, the Dan Flash and the iPhone saturates before USB 3, so there's not even any point in putting USB 3 on. We're, it's not PCIe, so we can't get Thunderbolt. It'd be nice to have some form of high-speed transit uh, you know, if you oh, want to move big movies around. Interesting, okay. Let's take a break. When we come back, let's talk software. iOS 7 and uh, iWork. Free, not updated, or maybe updated. I don't know. It'll look more uh, like iOS 7, I gather. The uh, icon. <laughs> <laughs> the icon has been improved. Our show today brought to you by Smile Software, those great folks who do uh, PDF Pen 6. The new version of PDF Pen is Fabu. I've been using it for some time now. It adds a some nice features, including the ability to export to Microsoft Word. If you work in the real world, that's a very handy feature. You can sign contracts, I, I, you know, in the process of buying a house. In real estate, they still fax your contracts to sign and fax back. 
Well, when they fax it to me, I get it in my email. I sign it with Smile PDF Pen Pro, and I fax it back via email. Uh, that's the way it ought to be. For uh, iPad, for iPhone, and for Mac, PDF Pen is fabulous. Everybody should have this. Uh, the best way to read and annotate PDFs to add text, images, signatures. I have my signature as a stamp in the library, and I just go, boom, signed. I do the initials, too. It's so much easier. You can make changes to a PDF, fix typos, resize, and delete images, fill out PDF forms. You can OCR, scan the documents. It's all built in, and it's just $35. You can get it on the App Store if you're on a Macintosh, or go to smilesoftware.com slash macbreak and download a free trial, which is a great way to do this. And, of course, you should also have the companion software on your iPad and or iPhone as well. Updated for iOS. Um, just, It's really a fabulous program, and we love the folks at Smile Software. Just go to Smile. You can't see. Can you see my screen, Chad? I don't know. I didn't know if you could see it or not. Smilesoftware.com slash MacBreak, and it'll say, Welcome, MacBreak fans. You can even see the uh, nice David Spark video showing uh, the latest options. This is the same company that does Text Expander. Frankly, if I were you, I'd buy both of them. So PDF Pen Pro is ninety nine ninety five. I got the wrong price. That was a Text Expander price, and you can still download a free trial, but not at smilesoftware.com slash MacBreak. Go there first to let them know that you saw it here, just so that we don't have any confusion. Smilesoftware.com slash MacBreak iOS 7, people are downloading it right now. The Gold Master is out. And uh, if somebody who is in the chat room and has downloaded it, if you can confirm uh, if the iPad version is in there as well. They are. Wow, that's very interesting. Everything's in there. Yeah. That's good news. That means yeah. presumably if they've got the bits, they'll be pushing it out at the same time. Yeah, iPhones and iPads, according to The Verge. On September 18th, they must have worked really a lot of overnights on the iPad. Team. I think so. They worked yeah. their apps off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here is a, a screenshot from uh, Shane EI in our uh, chat room of the download. Pre-release version of the iOS 7 GM seed for iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch. Devices updated to the seed cannot be restored to earlier versions of iOS. That's pretty typical. And you see all of the different versions it'll work on, including the Mini, which is good news, mm -hmm. uh, the third generation and the second generation iPads, as well as the fourth generation iPad. And iPhones going all the way back to the iPhone 4. Uh, if you have an iPod Touch, it's fifth generation only. Right. Um, so what is new? In I did, we didn't learn anything today about iOS 7. It sounded like everything that they'd already talked about at WWDC, right? Am I right? Yeah, that was just a quick catch-up for those people who hadn't been paying attention or right. for the press to say, oh, look at these new wonderful things we're going to do. But we saw all this stuff, I think, at WWDC. Yeah. Right. Um, Renee, you've been talking a little bit about the under-the-hood stuff, uh, yeah. the things like the particle physics engine and so forth. Does it all now make sense when you look at the uh, A7 processor? Yeah, I mean, I again, this is the big play for the future. Apple's got this habit of trying to change the paradigm of interface, whether it's command line with the Apple II or GUI with the Lisa and the Mac or multi-touch with the iPhone, and making the entire operating system built on this physics and um, particle engine, it just makes it more discoverable, more playful, all the things that you need when you want to take one more step towards mainstreaming uh, computer appliances. And it makes me really excited because developers who always used to tell you, you know, I could try and do those Mike Mattis um, photo app style animations, but I can do maybe one of them. They can do all of those for free now. It's just built in. There's Sprite Kit, there's UI Dynamics, there's UI Motion. They can make all these fantastic, like object oriented interfaces that took a lot, like took a Lauren Richter before to make. And I think we're going to see not just with iOS 7, but the next year of software development when developers get really used to it. I think we're going to see another leap forward in mobile apps. And that's what I'm really excited about. Um, and Infinity Blade 3 is not the the pinnacle of what's possible. That's just OpenGL ES3, which they announced <laughs> with this too, yeah. which was a surprise because, I mean, they hadn't announced before what OpenGL engine they were using in iOS 7. So this, okay, tell me, help me, help me out here. This is a big deal, ES3. 
Yeah, so I mean, the Mac went, uh, Mavericks, they said OpenGL 4 point something, I forget, but they hadn't said anything about iOS. And right. the, the higher the version of OpenGL support, it just makes everything that a game developer wants to do in 3D. I mean, Sprite Kit is great for 2D. There's no scene kit on iOS like there is on the Mac. So everyone uses like a, an engine, like the Unreal Engine or whatever. But underneath all that is the language, the OpenGL um, ES language, and that's going to version 3.0. And that should make a whole new generation of 3D games uh, possible. Uh, what else in iOS 7 is uh, significant? Um, anything else to mention? We, uh, all stuff we've seen. I like the new uh, photo gallery. Um, the right. You see those little teeny weeny thumbnails and expand them out so you can see the whole thing. The new gestures are nice. They're, if you want to use them, they're much faster. They're less discoverable, but if you want to use them to peek backwards or navigate sideways, I mean, that's, that's very useful for power users. What are the gestures? Show us. You can uh, so it, you they've shown them off before so I mean they're not they're not embargoed but you if you're in mail you can slide uh, your your finger across to go back in the in the hierarchy to see mailboxes and then mail accounts if you're in Safari or calendar you can slide between web pages or days uh, it just means you don't have to press a button go back press a button go back you can just very naturally do it and one of the things that iOS has always done really well especially compared to other platforms is that one to one finger mapping so it feels like you're moving a piece of paper and as long as that's almost perfect it feels like an illusion like you're actually touching something and moving it around with your finger and that just this goes to the next level uh, Safari the bookmarks now are these tabs looks like a Rolodex and you can flip through them you can touch your finger on them pull them around to different positions throw them off the screen multitasking is like that too it looks like WebOS now where uh, they come up with little cards, and instead of having to press a delete button, you can just grab the card and throw it off the screen. And that makes it much easier, again, you know, for, for five-year-olds, 80, 90-year-olds to use computers. Okay, that's what we're looking for. Um, iWork is now going to be free. The uh, iWork apps are going to be free, and iPhoto, too, free when you buy a new iOS device, much like iLife used to be free. You'll get iMovie, iPhoto keynote pages uh and numbers already on the phone i gather yeah if you purchase a new device they're going to be on there but they don't garage have garage band, band. Yeah, which is so so odd and as a musician i'm sure you're disappointed well i'm because i think it's one of the most brilliant apps in there but i understand that not everybody uses right. it so it's five it's, bucks yeah i mean it's yeah. it's five bucks it's cheap it's it's worth it to anybody who does anything with composing music do you think this you know i've been i've been saying that i think that the new mac pro will be bundled with all the pro apps do you think this is maybe a little hint that apple's going to do more bundling they've done this all along with iLife i'd sure like to see them do that because i think there is some that's a big uh, differentiator for them and as i think they fall behind a little bit in hardware differentiation especially on the phones well, Software it, differentiation becomes important. Yeah, I think what, with this new Mac Pro, they've narrowed what they're defining the pro consumer as, or pro consumer as. I mean, we're really talking about kind of the high level pros now, instead of the um, enthusiastic prosumer. You're talking about for a Mac Pro. For a Mac Pro yeah. now, because I think yeah. of, because of the storage issues and the, and the number right. of devices you have to add to it to do this. So yeah, I think in that case, adding all the pro apps would be pretty sweet. I, I don't know. A lot of pros that are going to care if Logic is on there or not. But having <laughs> Final Cut Pro on their Aperture, particularly if they update the thing, would make, I think, it would impress people. And, and that's the other thing. I don't think they've updated these any of these uh, new iOS apps, except they look like they're iOS 7, right? I'm looking at the no. screenshots, and they appear they to be different? the same. No, they're they the same. look like the no, same thing. As far as I understand, there's no time. I mean, they're, tr they're doing everything they can to get iOS 7 out. Um, no time. One person... Benjamin Mayo is a writer on Twitter said that GarageBand might be it's not going free because you have to pay for the loops still that those are licensed oh, and not right. owned by Apple. Ah. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. I like to see musicians get paid so yeah. I'm good with that. I'll buy it. And again. I guess a loop free GarageBand wouldn't be that interesting. Well, it would require that you actually have some talent in order to <laughs> use the program. So well, that eliminates me, I can yeah. tell you right now. Mm. Um Let's see. What else? Anything else uh, software-wise? Uh, I want to make sure we don't miss anything important. Uh, looks uh, like I mean, there was a lot they didn't show off. To like FaceTime audio, uh, it's it's an amazing sounding. Is it uh, much system. better? 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, they didn't show it off too much, but it sounds when they announced H wideband audio with the iPhone five, it was restricted to only a couple carriers, so almost nobody right. could use them. I think in Germany, but FaceTime audio sounds absolutely fantastic, and that's something. Some people poo poo it. They say, "Oh, I've already got a phone app," but you know, you already had SMS before iMessage, and right. this is a way to make person to person VoIP calls. And I think that'll be more of a of a big deal as time goes on. And then they they said, but they they alluded to, but didn't say exactly what that Siri was going to have more capability uh, and be a little, I don't know what. There was going to be a male Wikipedia. voice. Well, they they have some optional voices that you can download in addition. So they're going to have kind of the standard Siri voices. And then, then if you want to add the extra content, I believe you'll be able to do more that. than one, more than just a male and a female. You've always had different voices in uh, in different languages. You could get a male voice in Great Britain, for instance. Right. Uh, but you're, but in the in in U.S. Uh, the U.S. versions, you'll have a male voice available now. Uh, right. What else is new? And so you're looking at the page right yeah, now. Yeah, so. uh, you can make restaurant reservations with this thing. That's now. the open table stuff that Siri right. used to have. Right. That Apple took out. The new um, stuff is Wikipedia uh, and Bing. Oh yeah, they mentioned Wikipedia and Bing. They didn't mention Bing that. for photos. They yeah, left that, that out. <laughs> oh, and the Twitter stuff. Yeah. So right. You and you say, can now tell ask me what Leo's yeah, saying. Yeah. You Lady ask, Gaga was the big Twitter demo. Did they say, tell us what Lady Gaga just said? It was all over the screen. Gaga tweet after Gaga tweet. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I think that's just because that's the only person Tim Cook follows on Twitter. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. I oh. think I, I, that's an odd thing, but little little known fact. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. Here's, here's her picture. In, she's in all screen. over it. Yeah. They love Gaga. In fact, I think this Elvis Gaga Costello Gaga. thing he performed, of course, was just because they couldn't get Gaga. Problem. She's at the iTunes Festival in Europe, I think. Yeah, she right. performed oh, right. In fact, they showed that at the very beginning. They were uh, talking about the iTunes Festival. Some There's some new Siri uh, stuff. Siri looks weird on an iPad. She just takes up too much space. She just takes over the iPad. Will she read you the Wikipedia entry or just pull it up? They haven't shown her reading anything beyond, I think. Uh, she reads a few more things, I think, than last time. She or he, depending on your geography. Right. Um, but they haven't shown a lot more reading, which Siri is unfortunate because... will always be a woman to me. The one thing with interfaces is you want consistency, like whether it's gestures or natural language. And if Siri reads one thing but not another, you never really remember what it will or won't do. And then it becomes yeah. something you don't use because you're yeah. never sure. Right. I have that problem with Google now. Uh, yeah. But sometimes it'll read it to you. Sometimes it won't. Yeah. It's one of those things where you shout at Siri enough times Oops. and she doesn't <laughs> respond correctly. And then you just put her aside. Unfortunately, uh, you got to be careful when you say Google now around my phone because it's... It, Oops. See? <laughs> <laughs> it keeps waking up. Uh, <laughs> Google later. Google later. Oh, no, it's transcribing. It's transcribing everything I say right now, which is which is great. It's supposed to wait for OK Google now. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, apparently, all I have to say is Google now. This is interesting. Um, Apple announces the iPhone 5S, the most forward-thinking smartphone in the world, according to the Apple press release. Really? What do you think they mean by that? I think it's kind of what we're talking about here. Yeah, it's is that they've got a lot of stuff that's going to be thinking about the future in the next someday. Year. Forward thinking. Well, the iPhone five was the biggest thing to happen to iPhone since iPhone iPhone four S. I think was the most amazing iPhone yet. <laughs> uh, uh, so the five. Tim Cook, when he took the stage, did point out was uh, you know contrary to what I thought was going to happen was the mo the fastest selling best selling iPhone of all time. So there was no question the five was a huge. It makes sense with the 5S incremental improvements. Yeah. At this point, if you've got a hit, why mess with it? Make it much faster. Give it a fingerprint reader. I guess that's the question. Is this going to be a hit? Chris Breen. Oh, I expect so. They just, every time they roll one out, they have not had a failure with them. So I think it's going to do perfectly fine. I think there are some people, despite Apple's claims about the iPhone five being so popular that waited it out i did i didn't get an iphone five because i just there wasn't enough there compelling to uh to make me move but this one will yeah you agree uh, renee is this enough i mean the you know one of my questions is can apple do anything uh to make this look like a forward-looking phone compared with what's going on in the uh, android uh space is this enough well i mean there's two kinds of people in the world leo there's the people who always want the the incremental increase. They want the three 
the 3G, the 4, and the 5, because that's the big change. It's the right. bigger screen or the retina display. And then there's the people who want the S version because that's, you know, the the, the better version of what you waited for. So refined, it's the 5, refined, minute, yeah, the refined yeah. version. And most people fall into one of those two categories. So this will appeal to 4S people who are coming off contract. Uh, and the 5C will appeal to people, like we said before, who just have never gone to a smartphone or a phone or an iPhone before. Uh, the curve that Apple showed off did look like it was leveling off a little bit when you got to the five. In the early years, every out iPhone outsold not just the previous one, but all cumulative iPhones up until oh, that point. And that doesn't look like it's happening anymore. But I think with the 5C, this, I don't know what the right word is, this platform is still going to be a huge seller for Apple. And if they if they have these chips and they have this technology next year when they put out an iPhone 6, and if they do go to a bigger uh, screen size, because that's the next logical way to increase their market share. Uh, I think they've definitely built something here that will be incredibly interesting with iOS 7 and that processor going forward. I have not used iOS 7 yet. I've only <laughs> talked to people who've used it. Should I immediately update when it's available September 18th? You know, a lot of people who aren't paying attention and haven't been... Are going to be very surprised. Are going to be very surprised. They're going to jump into it and they think, oh, it's going to be very much like the previous version of iOS, and it's not. This is really like a jump from OS 9 to OS 10. But at least in terms of the look, wow, people are going jump. to be surprised at what mm -hmm. they find. Once you kind of move around the thing, you realize a lot of the stuff is in the same place as it was before. But just the look of it, and Johnny, I've fingerprints are all over this thing. Literally. Literally all <laughs> over this thing. And so I think for some people, there's going to be, at least for a couple of weeks, we're going to hear a lot of crying about it in that, well, I can't go back, and I don't like this, and I don't like the thin look, and I hate this pattern. And, and there is no going back. If there's you no upgrade, going back. you're done. No. And the target seems to be smaller, and why isn't this working the way it used mm -hmm. to work? And it's, just, it's typical of big changes for people. But Apple has really has made a statement, and I think Johnny Ive has made a big statement, saying, I'm in charge now, not only of the look of the hardware, but the software as well. And I think what the interesting question eventually there is, is there anybody in Apple who tells Johnny Ive no? I bet not. And I think that's an interesting question. Because I bet with not. Steve Jobs... He Nobody could, told him no. But he, he would change his mind. Right. And the question is, will Johnny Ive, if somebody goes to him and says, you know, I think we're really more about form than functionality in this particular feature, no? And right. does he just say, well, you know, I, I've actually been wanting to go back and live in London forever, and I have plenty of money. <laughs> see ya. So I am a sir, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we'll see. But, but again, for those people upgrading, be prepared do your research, see what other people say, and then... Don't rush. Yeah, and then see what you think. Apple, yeah, well, as we meant... Go ahead. So I was going to say, what you'll get on the radio show, for example, Leo, is things that... A lot of it is spatially identical. Like, all the icons are in the same place. But, for example, a lot of people never got the habit of looking for their icons. They would just type something into Spotlight, right. find their app, and press it. And Spotlight has moved dramatically. It's no longer to the left. You now pull down on any home screen to get it. And most people just don't discover that. So if you look at Twitter, a lot of people are like, where where did my app search go? Or right. where did the video camera go? Because the right. button's not there anymore. So I think the, initially people will download it. They'll have fun playing with the parallax scrolling and then they'll try to do something they were used to doing and they won't be able to do it and that's when everyone will go flooding onto the internet fortunately i'll be on vacation for three weeks <laughs> <laughs> right well because they'll want to do the pull down and then they'll get yeah. notification center oh. and they'll say but where's where's my search field well yeah. you don't yeah. pull down there you pull down here oh huh and, oh and if i flip up Oh, wait, I that's think I'm going to have to pay 99 bucks and get the Gold Master on my phone and take it with me so I can at least, when I come back, talk about it. It's Yeah, again, it's going to be a big change. Is that people. true, Renee? There's no rolling back? Somebody in the chat room said, oh, yeah, you could. I guess if you backed up before you upgraded, you could no, you then do, it with do the a beta. DFU. Yeah, you go, the beta, you could go into DFU. I mean, Apple is obligated to say that. It has to do a lot of ass covering with any kind of software update. The betas, you could roll back. It, it, will, it depends on what bits they flip when the Gold Master comes out and when the final release comes out. Uh, and also, Apple sometimes stops signing blobs because they don't want people to jailbreak older right. versions. So if they stop signing the older one, then even if you roll back, Apple won't authorize it anymore. So then it's even more complicated. So don't yes. don't count on being able to roll it back. And certainly the people who are most confused by iOS seven will be the ones least able to figure out how to get out of it. They'll be they'll yeah. be they'll be really stuck with it. 
So cancel your grandma and your grandpa and you know your less sophisticated friends well, and family. Well, particularly if they have a to wait. iPhone four, because if this thing is you can get it, but you, you may can not get want it. it. Right, it may run slowly on there. In which case, you really want that one, the old version, back. And we'll see. Yeah. They turn a lot of stuff off on the 4. Like, I think they turn off all the Gaussian blur shaders uh, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So it's a much easier load on the processor. <sighs> Is, uh, you know, we were, I was a little concerned with Apple because uh, I felt like they were coming into what has become a very fast-paced, very competitive phone marketplace where uh, uh, Samsung and others are iterating almost monthly. And, they, and Apple, at best, can iterate yearly. I was a little concerned that Apple might release a product that doesn't feel like a new phone, but just feels like it kind of also ran. It seems to me that the fingerprint reader alone is significant enough. Certainly a much better camera is significant enough. And the new look is significant enough. Even gold is enough <laughs> to oh. probably get Apple through this year, right? Yeah. That, that they look like they innovated. They look like they did something new. Enough for the people who are uh, uh, invested in the Apple ecosystem to say, yeah, I'm going to get that. Yeah, well, I think people continue if they have, if they start with an iPhone, a new one comes out, they're ready for an upgrade, they're going to jump to another iPhone. It's kind of the rare iPhone user that says, I'm sick of this whole thing, I'm going to jump to an Android phone, I'm going right. to jump to a Samsung. And, and we've seen from at least Apple's PR is that people tend to jump from an Android to an iPhone more often than they jump from an iPhone to an Android device. That's interesting. I didn't know that, really. So it's, um, you know, this is a, th these have just become sort of commodity objects now. The, the hardware advances are not like they were in the first couple of generations, where you, you got the first iPhone and you said, well, clearly this needs a better camera, or it needs a camera, or it needs this, that, or the other. We're now to the point where these things are so sophisticated and full-featured, you really have to look at iteration instead of this feature is missing. So for the the uh, fingerprint detector, for example, right. totally didn't need that. This is just something that somebody thought, okay, well, this would be a nice extra. Maybe it gets us into the government and military markets. That makes sense for us. But it's not something where people said, oh, well, this phone is missing this crucial feature. Nobody's been saying that. Nobody's missing but this. That's a, but well, it's a, that's a qual what an innovation would be. That's a quality an innovation would have. This is something new that nobody... Th now... It's almost exactly a year since Apple bought Authentic, the fingerprint company yeah. mm -hmm. that presumably is the technology in this. Can Samsung uh, copy this and have the uh, you know Galaxy S5 or the Nexus 5 from Google have fingerprint scanning in it? Or is this a technology that Apple now owns? You mean SID, Leo? What's that? Is that what it is, Sid? No, but I don't know because they had S Voice after Siri. And oh, S yeah. Wallet after <laughs> yeah. Apple. SID. You're, oh, you're for Samsung, right. Um, can they can they copy it and can they copy it as well, or does Apple own this technology? If I mean, they, they own multi-touch, they had all the, the they had all the touch the uh, finger I forget the name FingerWorks patents and people went ahead with multi-touch. You know, I, I went to the Samsung event earlier this year and Android Central went to the the latest one and they they were accused of not being innovative either. They said the Galaxy S4 was more of a Galaxy S3s and Android has you know in internal competition as well as external because you know the Moto X is great competition for the Galaxy S4 as well and so is the HTC One. So they really have a you know they have a, a very fast pace of innovation and it looks like Apple is picking very small battles and, and picking very small uh, user experiences and tackling those. So I'm sure a lot of people right now are very interested in fingerprint reading but Apple will have the head start and especially the mind share because they're usually pretty good at making these Santa Claus commercial features. Right. Well, and I, I think it's more than a Santa Claus commercial feature. It, it would have been if it merely unlocked the phone. Then I'd say, yeah, fine. It's like face recognition on Android. It's it's not something people are going to use. Mm -hmm. The fact that Apple has the confidence in this to use it for commerce mm -hmm. uh, tells me that Apple has much bigger plans for this. And I think this could be very big. If it really is a reliable authentication method, if it can be used to unlock your PGP key, if it can be uh, used to authenticate Bitcoin purchases, that kind of thing. There's a lot, there is a lot of promise in that technology. And if Apple can own it, and that's that's where my question comes from, if their patents and their acquisition of Authentic mean they can own it, that could be very big news for Apple. 
Yeah, and I think particularly with all this stuff coming out about the NSA, people are increasingly concerned about security and how much do you know? Does everybody know about my data? I think the next step forward would be if Apple could it somehow guarantee that we're going to keep your stuff safer than anybody else can. Right. Well, and, and, and as people are pointing out in the chat room, fingerprint reading is not new. Absolutely not. We've seen it on Lenovo's. We've seen it on the uh, Ative. We've seen it uh, on the Atrix, rather. We've seen it on yep. many, many other devices. But it was never very good. I've had it on many devices. It was unreliable. It was finicky. It, uh, it didn't seem like it was really genuinely authenticating. It wasn't um, cooked. It, it, and I think it wasn't cooked. And I think this is a very good example of where Apple has, has done in the past. They've taken a technology that exists but made it work and made it work successfully and then owned that market. And I yeah. think that's that, to me, is the thing to watch here. Uh, that and also the motion uh, stuff with the uh, M7 yeah. is intriguing in terms of a watch. Although what this kind of supports what you've said, uh, Renee Ritchie, is that the watch may be a very simple... Uh, exercise device, a, a Nike fuel band almost, instead of the full-featured device, at least at first. Well, I think it'll be informational and active. But the, the other thing before I forget is Apple made a point of saying that the fingerprint stays on the local device, that yes, it's not yes. being stored on a server anywhere, which I think was very... Uh, very deliberate on their part, given all these scandals. And Apple's got this good track record. I mean, people don't back up. We'll make Time Machine. We'll make Time Capsule. People don't save. We'll do iCloud. People hate putting in passcodes. Our research says almost no one uses a, pa a passcode because it's such a pain in the ass. They make short iTunes passwords because entering them is so onerous on mobile. Right. So if it takes away that sort of frustration and allows more people to actually use authentication, then I think that's where Apple sees the win. It also seems to me to be Apple's alternative to nfc at this point not putting nfc in this phone means to me that apple's not going to do nfc mm -hmm. that that's it on nfc and while every other phone does do nfc apple offering an alternative that it owns could be a very interesting play going forward they could say you can use nfc sure or you can use our far superior fingerprint uh authentication right and we've seen how this is going to work on the itunes store because, and, I mean, how many credit cards does Apple own right now? And All just make that, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so now you've got this one Apple touch buying right. technique. That's what I think is very interesting. Yeah. Now, it doesn't do everything NFC does. It does the authentication part. There's location stuff. There's the ability to tap an NFC Well, they're doing that with Bluetooth. I mean, they're going to do right. that with Bluetooth low energy, those right. features. LE. And we discussed that Horace Dedia graph on Twit on Sunday, but if you look at that graph, almost every platform is leveling off near a billion, except iTunes accounts, which is still spiking up yep. that hockey stick. Yep. And protecting those iTunes accounts will become more and more important. This could be very significant. I think this is the thing to watch. Yeah. Um, and uh, one of the bellwethers, that, you know, one of the indicators that I was looking for is the willingness to do commerce with it. The fact that Apple mm -hmm. is tells me this must be more than a gimmick. This is something Apple's going to invest in. All right, we're going to take a break. We're almost done. Your tips, uh, tools, anything you want to add as a final thought. Uh, new iPhones are here. Five, nothing surprising with these. The 5S, the, uh, the full-figured uh, brother to the 5, including fingerprint reading and an improved camera, iOS 7, of course, and a gold color. The 5C5 colors, including product red, uh, which is nice to benefit uh, AIDS relief in Africa. Um, and a uh, $100 lower price tag. Both will be available. Uh, you can walk into a store and get them if you can get through the line on September 20th. Pre-order for the 5C only on September 13th. I have to think that's purely marketing. I can't think of any other reason. That's purely because Apple wants a line, right? I can't think of any other reason for that. I mean, they didn't, they did last year, they didn't, they had pre orders for the iPhone 5 and there were almost no lines, and it just seemed yeah. to be better for everybody. So it's better for everybody. If I would far prefer to pre order it and have it mm -hmm. arrive on the 20th by FedEx than have to go to a store and get it. They want lines, which is too bad. I think that that's uh, sacrificing user convenience for uh, marketing. I can't think of any other reason for it. All right, we're going to take a break. Come back now. Of course, the best time to go to Gazelle would be now. <laughs> Don't waste any time. If you're looking at it thinking, okay, you, you might have made a mistake. You, you shouldn't wait. This is it. It's time. Gazelle is extending their normal 30-day offer to uh, get you to October 15th. Plenty of time for you 
to get in line, <laughs> pick up a new iPhone on the 20th, transfer your data over, then pile that iPhone with all your other gadgets into a box and ship it off to Gazelle. By the way, right now, your phone could be worth a million dollars. Check out the Gazelle sweepstakes on the front page. Gazelle buys back old iPhones, cell phones from a variety of manufacturers, including BlackBerry, HTC, LG, Motorola, Nokia, and Samsung. Maybe you're looking at that Galaxy S3 saying, boy, an iPhone 5C would be a good alternative. Let's, let's just see how close to an iPhone 5S or a 5C we can get. If we take our Samsung Galaxy S3, get an offer for that. Hey, of course it's in good condition. Hey, we're pretty close. $145 from Gazelle for an S3. Now, here's the deal. They will pay the postage on anything worth more than a buck. So add that to your basket. You have till October 15th to cash it in. Find some more stuff lying around the house. You got an old Surface tablet you want to get rid of? An Asus, a Google, a Samsung, Amazon Kindle? An iPad you want to get rid of? Pile that in the box. Old iPods, including Touches, Nanos, and Classics. A MacBook or even an iMac or a Mac Mini. Even an old Mac Pro. This might be the time. Just, I don't know how much my old Mac Pro is worth. I'm just kind of curious. I have the, uh, what do I have? I can't even remember what I have. You 3.2 gigahertz, Xeon, it was, yeah, let's see, what would my, not enough, I can almost guarantee you, since it's three years old, it's in an excellent shape because it's just been sitting under my desk. Oh, you have to do all the other specs. Well, it's going to take me too long. But they'll, they'll buy your Mac Pro. They'll, and I'll tell you what, the shipping on a Mac Pro is non-trivial, but they'll pay for it. Now, here's the beauty part. When they get the stuff, their data experts will check the condition and wipe it at the same time. I mean, I would suggest wiping it before you send it. Oh, but yeah. if you don't, don't freak. Uh, and then they'll pay you with a check, uh, a PayPal credit, if you want to get paid instantly. My suggestion, if you buy stuff on Amazon, get the Amazon gift card. They'll bump that uh, value by 5%. Gazelle has paid out over $100 million now to more than half. Look at that, an iPhone 5, 315 bucks. You're going to make money on it. Get the See, I don't understand why somebody would, I guess because you didn't want to extend the contract, but you're going to be at AT&T for the rest of your life anyway. You might, as, <laughs> you might as well just extend the contract, pocket $115, and you'll have you'll replace that iPhone 5 with a 5S. You'll, you'll be happy. This is why I love Gazelle. They're going to give you cold, hard cash for your used gadgets. Gazelle.com. Try it today. And uh, now through October 15th, by the way, you can lock in that iPhone price. Uh, time for our tips or uh, favorite stuff. What do you got? Anything you're downloading? Are you downloading the iOS GM seed right now as we speak? Uh, no, I've already downloaded oh. it. So <laughs> <laughs> that would be, a, I'm going to have to pay 99 bucks so that, cause I'm going to be in Italy or somewhere on the Yeah, 20th. sorry. No, I brought a gadget. Ooh, I know what this is. Cause I has one too. Do you have one too? Oh, but we should, we should ask the people at home. Do you know what this is? It is not a shark fin. Do you do? Doom, doom, Sharknado. Doom, 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 doom. Uh, it looks like one with a flat top. Uh, well, wait a minute. It? Here's a little tip. It's got an Ethernet port on the back, a power port, and a USB port. What? Wait a minute. Ooh. Ooh is there is there a, a, a babushka doll in it? A Russian matrashka <laughs> yes, doll Yes, it keeps here? opening. <gasps> no. <laughs> no, there's a hard drive in it. What is that, Chris Breen? This is a connected data transporter. And, uh, and the scenario is this. I have one, but I haven't used it. Tell me, is it cool? It is cool. Because a lot of people use uh, and share data over uh, Dropbox or, yeah. or, or SugarSync or one of these other yeah. services. And that's great. Except the, the nice thing about the transporter is that all your data is stored locally on the drive here. Now, that's a laptop drive, but they have, what, gigabyte and 512 gigabyte, uh, 512 terabyte and 2 terabyte right. choices. So you can get it populated. Right. Pretty. And if you don't, you can get it 199 for, without Without free. anything. And if you have a hard drive sitting around, Old you just throw your drive. own in there. Those are laptop drives, yeah. And the nice thing about this is that um, some people are concerned about keeping their data up in the cloud, particularly if Nowadays, you're in yeah. medicine, uh, you're an attorney, right. you don't want that stuff on a, on a cloud service. So instead, you store it here, you plug it into your router via an Ethernet cable, or you can get a wireless adapter if you want. People, you will share files with people just as you would with Dropbox. And instead of going up to the cloud, they're going actually to your device. It uploads out through the, your Ethernet port, and people can get the stuff that's stored directly here. 
one of the nice things about this is that you can have multiple units across offices. So let's say you have a dental office, for example, and you've got five different units throughout this thing. You can have a transporter in each and every one, and they will sync all the data between all five of them automatically. So regardless of where you are, you go from your home where you have one to your office, you can have access to that same record and that same data. In order to use this, however, you need to be using the transporter client on your computer. You don't do it through a web browser because the people who make this say, you know, that's kind of one of the problems that's we have with secure. cloud storage because yeah. it's not secure. Yeah. So any data that is transferred over here is encrypted. It's AES it 256, I think. Right. Yeah. So when it goes up, it's encrypted. When it comes down, it's decrypted by the transporter software that's on your computer. So, so I, I am able to browse. I'm looking at my transporter at home mm -hmm. uh, right now. I just can't get the files off of it, but I can see what's going on. I see it's right. connected. So I download the transporter software, put it on this machine, and now, like, as I travel, I could sync to it like I would Dropbox. Absolutely it would right. be waiting for me at home when I get home. Yep, absolutely. Uh, and I love the idea of having dual transporters and using that as a mutual backup yeah. solution. Yeah, so these are people that originally came from Drobo. Um, nice software. They've updated to the 2.0 software, which is a easy to install interface. Again, you can supply your own drive, just pay the $199, and you can have a couple of gigs of storage. If you tried to do that on a cloud service, you'd be paying through the nose. Yeah, yes. Yeah. I mean, you may say, well, that sounds expensive, but it's it's cheaper than buying a, a terabyte on Dropbox or, or Google exactly. Drive. Exactly. And then yeah. also, and consider the security. Yeah. There's some people that just right. can't use cloud right. storage, and this is the solution. Right. I, their whole pitch to me was, this works just like Dropbox. Right. So I'm, that's what I'm, I'm curious to see. Um, I, I have it set up. I just haven't uh, used it. It's actually, they, they're, they were bought back by Drobo, so now oh, Drobo. they're back in. Yeah, they're default. back in Drobo. Oh. It's so funny. Yeah, transporter, and it's at uh, connecteddata.com. Right, or you can also go to filetransporter.com. Oh, okay, and that'll you take go. you there. Renee uh, Richie, what do you got for us today? I have an oldie but a goodie, Leo. There's an app called Air Video that you run a little server app on your computer, and then it's an app that runs on your iPhone or iPad. And on the surface, it just does one thing. It will take any video you have on your computer, it will transcode it on the fly if it has to, and it will push it either to your iOS device or via AirPlay to a big screen TV attached to your Apple TV. So if you have a bunch of old videos on your computer and you just want to watch them on your Apple TV and you don't want to have to go through and run them through hand break or do anything else to make them Apple TV compatible, it'll do all of that for you. Oh, that's The neat. nice thing, absolutely. And the nice thing I used it for is that my mother still has a big CRT television. It works. She sees no reason to update to an LCD <laughs> TV, but that means she can't use an Apple TV. So if I go there, I just can't, there, there's no putting an, an Apple TV on it. There's no direct way to connect anything anymore. So what I did is I took an old iPod touch and I just used the old AV cable connected it to her TV, and put this app on it. And now I can take any video on my computer in the same way that I would over an Apple TV. I can just project it to the CRT television. And it'll even support uh, iTunes DRM videos by shooting them into um, Safari first and use Safari to decode them, authorize and decode them, and then shoot that back to the television set. So for anyone on older television technology that the new Apple TVs don't support, or for anyone who has a bunch of videos that they collected way before iTunes became the monolith that it is now, it's a really smart, really clever, really easy app to just let you watch the videos on your computer or whatever connected storage you have on your device or your Apple TV. Very cool. I use it almost all the time. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to mention something that I mentioned on uh, iPad today that you can't get yet, but um, I've been playing with the beta, and I think it's uh, it's going to be something to watch for. This is going to be an iOS app called Ping that the idea is to replace email with something that still works over email transport but looks a lot more like uh, maybe I am. It's much more instant and immediate. Um, and I, I think they're going to do eventually do a uh, an Android version, but right now it'll be iOS only. Works with your Gmail or your AOL mail account, your Outlook account. And as you can see, if you're watching the video here, uh, what happens is it, it it becomes like an instant messenger interface where you can have threaded conversations and so forth. It wor makes email work more like how people are using messaging today. Um, but you still have the advantage of it's it's running over Gmail. It's running over an email uh, uh, server. Uh, I think really an interest. I've played with Mailbox and a lot of, and you know, of course, the Gmail app, 
And I just feel like mail, email is so broken. We need a, we need to kind of reimagine uh, email. And I'm impressed by this project. They went public last week. Uh, they are it's they're doing like mailbox. They're doing signups. So you go to a ping app, p i n g a p p dot com, and put your email address in, and they'll do the same thing. They'll say you've got you know actually what you put in is your phone number. Actually, come mm. to think of it, because then they're going to send you a, a text saying here it's time to download it. Um, and you know you're behind 138,000 people or whatever. Uh, I'm not sure when they plan to release it. I think it's fairly soon. They may be waiting for iOS 7. That may, may be the, the key for them uh, on releasing this. But a really interesting take. They're doing some thinking about what email could be or should be, and I think we need to rethink it. Pingapp.com. I've been playing with it a little bit, and I'm pretty impressed. Hey, I thank you for being here. This has been a big day. This is Apple Announcement Day. Always a lot of fun. Chris Breen. Couldn't do it without you. We love MacWorld.com, the Mac Daddy, and I love it when you come up here and we we'll see you in person, even though we don't. You didn't have your album of the. Uh, you know, I was going to bring one in, but I. Just uh, put it by. Yeah. Crap. An album hat. You need an album hat. <laughs> That's what I need. Yeah. Renee Ritchie, iMore.com. Thank you for breaking away from your live coverage at iMore.com. Read all about it, though, there, and I'm sure you'll be doing more about it throughout the day. Lots more Absolutely. to say about the new iPhones. Thanks also to Andy Anako, who phoned in from the uh, demo floor. Always great to have Andy. Uh, on our side of the country uh, working for us. Thank you for joining us. Thanks to Chad Johnson, as always, our producer. We do Mac Break Weekly. Normally, there he is. What are you wearing? I wore a shirt. More. I wore awesome. shirt. Where'd you get that? Uh, uh, Renee sent some over uh, the last uh, time he was here. So uh, uh, I decided that today uh, would be a good day to, to, to wear it underneath the car. Thank you, shirt. Chad. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> we do this show, uh, if there aren't Apple announcements, at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC. On Tuesdays, please stop by, watch us live, or come into the studio. Email tickets at twit.tv. As always, we have a nice studio audience. It's really fun to do this for real people. Uh, as opposed to you imaginary people out there on the other side of the camera. <laughs> you can get audio and video after the fact. Uh, downloads always available at twit.tv slash mbw. Or subscribe and you'll get it every week wherever you get your uh, podcasts, whether it's iTunes or whatever. Uh, Instacast, Pocket Cast, Dog Catcher. Thanks for uh, joining us. Uh, we do have a special up now, I think, or soon, our coverage of the... Uh, New iPhone announcement, Sarah Lane, uh, Chris Breen, and Scott Bourne, our former yeah. uh, co-host on MacBreak Weekly, joined us for that event this morning. Uh, you'll be able to get that at twit.tv slash specials. Yep, it is. Wow, that was fast. Special number 170. Is that right or 179? 170. Zero. And um, uh, the Apple uh, official video is now available. Oh. So imagine a few. Here's what I would suggest you do. Download ours. Download the Apple video, synchronize them up. It'll be when it'll the be, lion roars. You yeah. want to start the <laughs> Apple feed, and it'll be awesome. the third roar. Yeah, third yeah, roar. third roar. Very important to get that third roar. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. We'll see you later. Now get back to work because break time is over.